Worldcom is a media only event and it's the thing I look forward to the most at CES every year. If you're into a smart home technology like me, this is the place to be. Also, they have really good food and beverage, so that's a plus. Let's go check it out. Pepcom is always one of my favorite events during CES because it gives you a fast, high level look at what's actually coming to market. Not just concepts, but real products you'll be able to buy soon. I walked the floor and I picked out 26 standout products across smart home, energy, robotics, pets, and personal tech. This isn't everything that was there. These are just the things that caught my attention. Quickset showed off new smart lock designs that lean much more modern than what we've seen from them in the past. These support Bluetooth and Matter, which means better reliability and compatibility across platforms. The big takeaway here is that smart locks are finally starting to look as good as the doors they're installed on without sacrificing the ecosystem support. Lachlan also had a wide range of new lock styles on display, from ultra modern to more traditional designs. What stood out to me was the variety. They're clearly trying to cover multiple use cases, whether that's homeowners, builders, or property managers looking for something different than the usual rectangle on the door look. Lockley continues to focus on tap to unlock technology, which is perfect for new construction, short-term rentals, and multi-user environments. Instead of codes or keys, you can tap a phone or credential to unlock. If you manage rentals or build spec homes, this kind of frictionless access makes a lot of sense. Known for their garage door tech, MyQ is expanding to the front door with a new three-in-one smart lock that combines a lock doorbell camera and lighting. This is clearly aimed at simplifying the front entry experience with fewer devices, fewer apps, and one ecosystem. It's a smart evolution for a brand that already owns the garage. Eufy had a strong showing with new smart locks, a new doorbell, and a light with a built-in camera. They continue to lean into privacy-focused local processing while packing a lot of functionality into single devices at an approachable price point. If you want fewer gadgets doing more things, UV is clearly thinking in that direction. Once you're inside the home, the next big theme was something we don't always see in smart home tech, design finally catching up. Lutron introduced new wood shade options, which bring a much warmer, more premium look to the smart window coverings. They also showed a humidity sensor designed to automatically trigger things like bathroom fans. It's subtle, but this is a smart home tech doing what it should, quietly working in the background. GE Lighting showed more stylish lighting options that feel decorative first and smart second, which is exactly how lighting should be. These are fixtures and bulbs that look good even when they're turned off, and they still integrate cleanly into smart home ecosystems. Jasco's and Brighton line continues that same trend with more design forward smart lighting. They're clearly focused on making smart lights feel less like tech accessories and more like intentional parts of the home, especially for people who don't want their houses to look like a gadget showroom. Hunter showed new wall controls, including a panel designed to replace a traditional switch. This gives you much more control over fans, lighting, and scenes without pulling out your phone. It's a small change that actually improves daily usability, especially in shared spaces. From controlling your home, the next category was all about keeping it powered. Anchor continues to push deeper into home energy with Solix, their battery and backup ecosystem. This is clearly aimed at homeowners who want modular, expandable power. Whether for outages, solar integration, or just peace of mind, Anchor's strength here is making complex energy products feel approachable. I'm really excited to share that I'll be installing one of their systems in my home, so be sure to subscribe if you're interested in that. Meanwhile, EcoFlow went big, literally with large battery backup systems capable of supporting entire homes. These are serious systems designed for longer outages and higher loads. If you're looking at adding whole home backup without a traditional generator, EcoFlow is one to check out. I would really love to compare the two. Jackery also showcased a new rugged battery backup option designed for outdoor use, job sites, and emergencies. These feel more durable and more purpose-built than earlier models, which makes sense given how many people expect their power stations to live outside the house. Now that we covered power, it's time to talk about the robots doing the work, inside and out. Roborock introduced new robot vacuum models and also continues to expand into robot lawnmowers. They're applying the same navigation and mapping strengths they're known for for indoors to their outdoor environments, which could make them a serious competitor in this space. 
Eureka focused on new models at a more approachable price point. Not everyone wants or needs a $1,500 robot vacuum, and Eureka is clearly aimed at buyers who want strong performance without premium pricing. Personally, I like that they have a bagless design. As someone with a couple of corgis running around the house, I know what a pain it can be replacing those so often. Now let's step outside, because robot lawn care was everywhere this year. Ecovacs showed updated robot vacuums and robot mowers, including a new version of the A3000 mower with an edge attachment. That edge detail matters. It solves one of the biggest complaints about robot mowing, which is cleanup afterwards. Sunseeker showed a much beefier new mower, clearly aimed at larger yards with tougher terrain. This is not a toy. It's built for people who want serious automation without babysitting the machine. Anthbot is more focused on smaller robot mowers with new features, making robotic lawn care feel more accessible. These are designed for homeowners who want automation but don't have massive properties. I'd love to test this out in our backyard. We've got a fence and gardens, and it'd be great to see how it navigates there. Works did also tease two new robot mowers coming soon. While they're limited on details, it's clear that they're continuing to evolve their lineup, modernize navigation and usability. We're gonna check them out today on the main show floor and we'll have more information for you guys. Now I also saw GoCo on the floor. This one stood out because it's clearly aimed at simplicity. And from what I saw at Pepcom, GoCo is targeting homeowners who want an easy to use robot mower without a huge learning curve or oversized machine. It's early, but it looks promising. What caught my attention here is that they have a lightning that kind of looks like a Tesla from the front. After all that automation, a few products focus more on pets, wildlife, and personal tech. BirdFi showed their new smart bird feeder models, continuing to refine their cameras and AI bird detection. If you're into backyard wildlife, these keep getting better. Clearer video, better angles, and smarter alerts. Now, of course, we also saw BirdBuddy, which launched new models improving camera quality and accessibility. This brand continues to make bird watching feel more interactive and surprisingly addictive. I'd love to compare the two, so stay tuned. We'll see if we can make that happen. Now, if you have a dog, you might love Pet Door. It's all about controlled access. It allows pets to come and go while keeping unwanted animals out. For pet owners, especially in colder climates, this solves a very real problem. One of the most interesting launches happened yesterday. Looky is a brand new AI wearable, and I'll be wearing a sample unit for the remainder of CES. It's not a smartwatch, it's more like a passive second brain, capturing context so you can recall moments, conversations, and patterns later. I'll have a deeper follow-up once I've spent more time with it, but early impressions are quite compelling. Timely is a personal safety device that looks like a flashlight, but it includes a camera. It has connectivity and emergency response features. It's designed for situations where pulling out a phone isn't practical. It's simple, purpose-built, and very thoughtfully designed. Those are 26 standout products from Pepcom 2026. And what really stood out this year was how much smarter tech has become without becoming more complicated. There's less setup, better design, and more real world usefulness. If you want deeper dives on any of these, especially the robot mowers or the lucky wearable, let me know. I'll be covering more throughout CES and I'll have videos of some of these products coming in the future. So thanks for watching.